going live. Praise God. I believe we are live. Hello, hello. Welcome to uh, our Med by Grace show, men's special. We have been away for a while, but we're here now. And uh, just in case you thought we're not coming on because we come on a few minutes late, we'll let you come in and uh, and settle in and we're going to get into some stuff tonight. This is going to be so good. You don't want to move. You don't want to go away. So grab your cup of tea and we're going to be discussing some very practical, important uh, subjects, uh, what matters that, that, that affect your life every day. And uh, we believe in tongues and uh, we believe in angels and we believe in the Holy Spirit, but we also believe in the practicality of life and that's what we are doing today and uh, as you may have already guessed we are talking about uh in today's made by grace show we are talking about uh success in the marketplace we are talking about success in the marketplace and uh, i have with me some distinguished gentlemen uh three bishops i'm surrounded by three bishops i'm in great company and uh while we do the introductions i'm sure our team will go ahead and share out the link uh to everybody else so that we are all in the studio together sitting around the word and just uh, looking at this stuff let's see if we can uh, bring the bishops back so i've got with me uh, Bishop Lombe joining us from Boston in the United States. I'm sure it's colder than England. It's getting dark at 3 p.m. here at the moment. So uh, uh, one of those things. And uh, we have all the way from Lusaka, Zambia, uh, Bishop Ebotosi. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, gentlemen from Boston and Lusaka, welcome. And we have, uh, obviously, not the least, uh, one of my very, very close friends uh, on the show, Bishop Cyrus Simonza from Quito, my hometown, where I uh, first cried in, uh, I mean, where I was born. And uh, welcome to the show, Bishop. Thank you. Praise God. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you share the link out, uh, we will just uh, play the intro, and then we will get into success in the marketplace. I'm excited and I cannot wait. Let's do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This video is going to stay on uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and even on my website, my personal website, davidcover.com. It's actually going live right now, even on my website. There was, this video will stay there. You want to go back to it, listen to it over and over again. Uh, and I think Bishop Lombe has done something to his video, so I was about to tell him, but I didn't, didn't want to call him and disturb his call. There we go. He will come right back. But gentlemen, let's see if we can kick in and, and go for it. We have some uh, questions that have already come in. So we're talking about the marketplace and success in the marketplace. This show is for Christians who are saying, listen, I don't want to just talk about the blessing. I want to see the blessing. I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that this is for you. If that is you saying that, it's you and me at the moment, Bishop Tosi. So it looks like you're going first. So when we talk about uh, the marketplace, what do we mean by the marketplace so what do we mean when we say the marketplace we are talking about success in the marketplace what do we mean by the marketplace gentlemen what do we mean when we say the marketplace who's going first bishop tossi you going for it let the the bishop from Kitwe, your hometown start <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll let the presiding one go first go for it bishop uh what do we mean when we say the marketplace what are we talking about people might be thinking we're talking about somewhere you go to the market to buy fish uh what do we mean by the marketplace all right thank you so much um all the men of God and uh, Dr. David, thank you for the opportunity. It's always a pleasure for us to come together and uh, just to share on this platform, a holy platform. Yes, sir. Uh, simply put, the marketplace is, um, I would call it, um, it's an environment of exchange 
and uh, it could also be trading in the sense that um, it's a place where um, um, deals are done. It's a business space. Let me put it this way. Marketplace is a business space. Um, that is where transactions are done and uh, that is where um, uh, money is determined and uh, money is made. Of course, it's not just an open market per se, but it is uh, a place where money decisions are made. Um, it's a place of trade, people to different uh, trades and so on. So a marketplace could be um, the business space where um, we come, for example, um, we have people who are CEOs and that they, they, they are in the marketplace. They, we have people who are running businesses, they are in the marketplace. So it is a place where trade, per se, uh, happens. And trade, we mean exchange of money. Yes, sir. Exchange, of, simply put. Okay. We can hear you, Bishop, if you're still there. So, so Bishop is saying that the marketplace is a place of business, a place where there is an exchange of whether it's services, commodities, or, or finances, or money is being, being exchanged. That is a marketplace. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, gentlemen, before we uh, move it along? We're just, just, just defining what, what we understand by the marketplace. What is the marketplace? Any other thoughts? Well, I like what uh, uh, the our bishop has said, yes, uh, and especially the fact that he has uh, elaborated that it is a business space. It's a place where there's uh, exchange taking place. Uh, just even by the term market, market is a place where ideas are exchanged, goods are exchanged, uh, so many things are brought to uh, a business table where you are able to confer and interact in terms of business approach, uh, corporate approach. Uh, it's not just restricted to the spiritual uh, atmosphere in the sense that it's not church life, it's business mm -hmm. life. So yeah. it entails that even a child of God or to be in a place where uh, he's able to discuss, he or she is able to discuss mm -hmm. business matters, corporate matters, uh, things to do with uh, the financial uh, abilities, financial empowerment, and just to expand one's mindset by yes, being exposed to a place where uh, real life issues are being talked about other than just restricting oneself to just spiritual matters. I mean, it's an open place where a lot of good things are supposed to be discussed that empowers uh, somebody's life. That at the end of the day, though you are a Christian, but you become so relevant to life because you have been to a place where you've obtained information that is uh, relevant to you, information that empowers you, information that sets you up, information that just connects you to the, the, the real life out there. So uh, mm -hmm. marketplace is really a place of exchange. What do you bring to the table that I should also bring to my table and let's discuss? Does it make sense to both of us? Yes, then let's go for it. But at the end of the day, in our agreements, in our dealings, in our discussions and interactions, our lives are better. Yeah. Praise God. So the marketplace is a place, uh, not just a place where you go and uh, I'm praying times, which is a great thing, by the way, uh, but it is a place where you do enterprise. Uh, and the reason we, we brought this topic on is because uh, I, I've, I've been served for a very long time and so have all my friends here. In fact, in fact, all of you here on this show have probably been served longer than me. It's possible, you know, in terms of serious salvation. Uh, because some of us were saved, but we were not really saved. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, until we got saved, saved. But, uh, but, but literally... And so because we've been in Christendom for so long, we, we have seen Christians come and go, Christians pray, Christians believe God, Christians tithe and they give and they save and they do all sorts of things. 
and yet their lives are not better. Uh, and uh, it seems as though the world is doing better. And why is it that uh, people in the world are doing better and, and Christians are still struggling, still waiting for a miracle? And this is why we put this show on together. So let's help our friends and family and our people uh, to, to look at how to really make it in life. Because we can pray with you. We can share the word of God with you. But these are practical things that we believe can help you get ahead in life. With or without prayer, uh, you can still get ahead in life. Because there is a, a non-believer out there who is succeeding in the marketplace without a single prayer, without a single day of fasting. So, so how are they making it? How much more? A child of God. So let's see if we can move this along. Um, Bishop Lomber is back on the line. So we'll let him kick off the uh, the next question uh, before he, he goes on a little mini break because uh, he's doing a few mini breaks in Boston. Uh, but before he does another one, we'll let him uh, uh, go with the uh, second question. Is the marketplace for Christians? Are Christians supposed to be in business? Uh, are, are Christians meant to make money? Money is the root of all evil. Are Christians meant to be in a place where money is being made? Or are they just meant to believe God for money? Let's talk about that, gentlemen. Is the marketplace for Christians? Bishop Lombard, you can go for it before we lose you briefly. Oh, we have. Okay. So <laughs> he will be back. Uh, I thought America had stable internet. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, the internet elsewhere is, is holding up better than the United States tonight. So, so Africa me... seems to be doing a whole lot better. Eh? Africa is doing better tonight. <laughs> uh, so, gentlemen, Bishop, is uh, the marketplace for Christians? Let me, let me go first, if I can. Go for it, sir. I think um, what we have seen um, over the years is that as believers, we've done extremely well in uh, spiritual matters. Mm. We have uh, actually made a lot of progress. Actually, by now, maybe we can say that the gospel is almost preached everywhere in the world. Um, we have seen healings happen. We have seen deliverance taking place, of course, deliverance in the right context. Yes, we have sir. seen um, uh, miracles, signs and wonders. Mm. If there is a space that we didn't uh, do well in is the marketplace. Yes, and um, again, I want to be sensible enough and admit that it's we are making headways there now. We were mm -hmm. not okay previously, but I think now there is that proper understanding and uh, we are really making inroads in that space. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the marketplace is a space that um, is not a Christian space because at okay. that uh, a place we we meet because you cannot just say i'll be doing business with fellow biz, uh, believers you cannot mm. do that in fact uh, the bible makes it very clear that the wealth of the righteous is um, in the hands of the wicked mm. or in the pockets of the wicked i'm trying to uh, to simplify it or to amplify it yes, the sir. wealth of the righteous is stored up in the pockets of the wicked so meaning we have to trade with unbelievers. And this is where now it becomes very interesting. And the reason why we shy away from that space. Yes, sir. Because principles that we find there, the people that we find there, are not really godly uh, environments mm. and, and so on. So we, we try to run away from the fact that there's corruption in the marketplace. We, we, we are uncomfortable because there is no truthfulness in that space. So how can we trade in a space that is full of evil, full of injustice, full of corruption? So the easiest thing for us to do is to stay away, to keep right. our holiness and our purity. Right. But right. when we do that, we then, because remember, he who's got money rules. <laughs> That That's is just right. the law of life. Mm -hmm. So when we shy away, we let the wicked control the money. Then they have control over us. 
they, we can make noise. Sorry to say to use that word. We can make no, no, noise. In church. Let's be blunt. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can make noise in church, but if there is no money, it is just some noise that we are making. We are mm -hmm. we are we don't have authority. Yes, money brings a sense of authority. And that is why you notice that politicians have got mm -hmm. a wider say and a bigger say than just us who are speaking from the spirit. So mm -hmm. what we're all anointed. Amen. What mm -hmm. we need is the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of money. Yes, sir. Then we have influence. Again, uh, men of God and all our viewers, you'll agree with me that when someone is talking, the first question that comes to mind is, who is this one? Mm, that's right. And once we answer, who is this one? then our attention is determined by that. Mm. Um, so if it's someone with prominence in finances, who pay attention. Absolutely. Yeah. So even right now, as we are speaking, I think people are like, who is this one? What does he go? What, what has he got? What can he tell us? And so that's yeah. just a reality of life. Yeah. So the marketplace, right. as evil as it is, it's got what we need. The us running away from there, then like uh, Pastor David, you said, we become powerful broke Christians. And yeah. we are not heard, we are not respected, we are mm -hmm. not given a space. Uh, right. Which forum are you going to speak at? Mm. Um, who are you going to influence? Because when it comes to influence, people see who you are they That's don't right. just hear who you are. That's right. So that is why the marketplace is very good. But I, I want to go back and say we have made some in, in, uh, inroads. We have made some, some way into the business, uh, at business space. The only mm -hmm. concern, I'm sure you're going to come to this, uh, uh, the moderator, Pastor David, Dr. David, yes, sir. is how are we maintaining integrity in the, in the marketplace, marketplace. which mm -hmm. is corrupted. So what we have seen over the years, I'm sorry to go ahead of uh, the discussion. Yes, the problem sir, that great. we have seen is that we have sent people into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Instead of them converting the systems there, they have been converted. Wow. So that's okay. where now the problem has been. So we did a lot to do in preparing people for the marketplace because that's where Jesus was saying, I'm sending you there, but yes. uh, be as wise as a serpent because that's there right. you, you, you have to be shrewd. Absolutely. And still maintain your righteousness, maintain your holiness. You mm -hmm. don't have to become like them. Then um, um, Romans chapter 12 tells us, that we need to be we don't need to conform to the systems of the world or oh, to Lord. the marketplace systems of corruption, hmm. but we must be renewed we with the word yes. of God. So what we need is from the marketplace, we come and bath in the word of God. We come hmm. and cleanse ourselves. We go back there. We are the light. Even in the marketplace, we take the light of Jesus Christ there. Amen. We need to be there, but we need to know who we are before we step there because they are going to make us like them and mm. there will be no difference. Thank you. Wow. So the marketplace will get you to, uh, to, to a place where you're vulnerable sometimes. And we will get to that a little bit more as, as we um, go further today. But, but we are concluding from what you're saying that the marketplace is also meant for us, uh, uh, Christians. As a matter of fact, um, uh, today I'm not going to be giving a lot of pointers because I want to play the advocate. Uh, because I, I, I think I want to speak for a lot of people and, and ask questions that, are, that a lot of people would like to ask, but they don't want to ask. You know? And so, so tonight I'm going to be mostly the advocate. Uh, it is good to have our friends online. By the way, if you if you just joined this show, you're watching the Med by, by, by Grace show, and uh, the subject tonight is uh, success. 
in the marketplace. We see you, Bishop Tupelon. We see you, Pastor Lico. Hey, listen, we see you, Pastor Getchit. We love you guys and thank you for joining Mops. We see you guys. But listen, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about success in the marketplace. We are tired of the Christianity that is just in tongues and prayer and, and believing and believing and believing without seeing. Uh, what kind of faith are we living if we're just going to pray and see nothing? So tonight, before you leave this show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching us from, you're going to know what to do. You're going to know what you need to do to get ahead in life. You're going to know how to succeed in life. And it's not because we're going to have a deliverance session. No, it's because we're going to impart answers and wisdom and things that you need to get ahead in life. Uh, Bishop Tosi, uh, before we move on from this one, uh, do Christians have any business uh, in the store in the in, in the marketplace? You know, doing stocks and shares, or or running a, a company, or, or or doing any of those things? Do, do we have a place in there, sir? Doc, certainly, yes. The the Christians must be in the marketplace. It is for the believers as well. Uh, I, I, I looked at the scripture in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 13, where Jesus expressly uh, tells the, the, the reader, he says, uh, occupy until I come. Yes, that sir. verse, when I looked at that verse, it's both mm -hmm. a spiritual verse, but it's also a business verse. That's good. To occupy... Until he comes, it means do business. Make sure that you are part of what the system is able to offer and get the best out of it as a Christian, as a body mm -hmm. of Christ, and as believers. Mm -hmm. Then our authority, our leadership, our uh, endorsement becomes so real. Mm -hmm. What the problem is, is that we have a lot of us Christians that are so deep. I mean, it's a joy and it's a plus. We are yes. so sold out, so committed, so passionate, but yet mm -hmm. half the time we are broke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's very difficult that we can even call for mega meetings. Why? We'll have to beg, we'll have to push, we'll have to make sure that sometimes we end up borrowing when mm. these resources these finances mm. that we have to get connected to and tap into it's right there in the marketplace uh there, there there's a difference between working so hard and mm. working smart well, there good. are people that believe working so hard toiling and laboring getting so worked out and so tired but yeah. absolutely nothing to bring to the plate Absolutely. And yet information is right there in the marketplace. Simply interact with people that have done it before who can actually mm -hmm. introduce you to what life is able to offer. And you do your life so well as a child of God. Yes, sir. The believers today must up their game. We have to up our game because we cannot just rely on uh, uh, our spiritual uh, in-depth which is good. That's the whole essence. But the, right. the, uh, the non-believers there are still prospering. They are making Absolutely. it. They are succeeding. Yeah. I mean, look at their houses. They are better. They are yeah. influential. They have got the money. They have yeah, the yeah. voice. They can be listened to. Where mm. are we as children of God? We've mm. got to begin to break camp and get to where life is happening. Let's go out there by the city gates and trade and interact. Let's listen. If we have to learn, let's learn until we bring ourselves to a place where we have what we can offer and we are offering it from the resources and the empowerment that we have gotten into our mm. own hands as resource that God has blessed us. So we need to occupy until he comes. Jesus himself in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 8, he says he Come was on. able to go to the, to the villages and the cities 
because yeah. some people had to go give the money. It was That's with right. the people that were financially empowered that Jesus was able to do so much. We mm -hmm. cannot afford just to hide behind the pulpit in the name of we are Christians, we can't do business, we can't no. go to the marketplace. Time has come now for us to go where this is happening. And like Bishop Cyrus said, let's go there with our integrity. Let's go there with our purity. Let's Amen. go there with our prayer. Let's go there with the mandate of making sure that we enrich the kingdom of God and make sure the kingdom of God has every resource. If tomorrow we say we want to fill the stadium, we are not going to be writing letters to lobby for help or support, but right. we have it in our midst. We right. have it amongst ourselves. Therefore, mm -hmm. by doing that, the world will begin to respect us and then we'll begin to go to a place of authority. When we speak, governments will hear. When we speak, nations will hear. When we speak, mm -hmm. the world will hear because we have what it takes. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm getting fired up and uh, I am resisting uh, getting too excited and, and literally coming in and, uh, and talking a lot of stuff because... I am the advocate tonight, and uh, I can see uh, Bishop along the back. So as we, before we move on to the next part, because the next part is about to get explosive, because we're going to talk about some real stuff in a moment, uh, where we live every day. Because listen, uh, I, I, if you're watching this, listen, wherever you are, you're saying, listen, I'm tired of being tired. I am tired of being broke. I'm a child of God. Answers are going forth tonight. You would know. How to get out and get on top if you're already doing it you will still know how to get even better at what you're doing so bishop on there very quickly please tell us uh uh the question at the bottom of the screen i believe uh if i haven't forgotten where are we number two uh we are saying uh is a marketplace for christians uh so maybe as you are here let's move it along and do number three because it's very similar and it says should christians or believers do business with non-believers. Since uh, Bishop Saras and Pastor Bishop Dossier have already crossed over to touching on a little bit on that. So let, we might as well dive into it. So number three, as Christians, should we do business with non-believers? Can I sign a deal with a non-believer, an idolater who worships the devil, and but there's a deal on the table? Uh, should I deal, do a deal with other religions and, and other things like that? Let's talk about this. If the money is with another person who's from another religion or somebody who's a professed atheist can i do business with them let's talk about this gentlemen bishop Lombe, go for it um uh, this is interesting i thought airtel has shifted to the us and uh, <laughs> we were wondering the same thing sir <laughs> yeah listen uh I, I know i have missed a lot but i'll try to catch up when we talk about believers doing business with non-believers, I've read in the Bible where the Bible says the riches of the wicked are piled for the righteous. Mm -hmm. So how can the righteous go and get the wealthy of the wicked if the righteous are not going to get it where the wicked are found? Come on now. So, uh, 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 number two, the money doesn't say, me, I came from a Muslim, me, I came from an unbeliever, me, I came from a witch doctor. We all use the same money that came from the witch doctor, that came from a prostitute, that came from anyone, and we still keep it in our wallet, and we take it to church. Now, uh, doing business with non-believers, they have the money more than most of the Christians. Let's be honest with each other. They, 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 they have more wealth than we have in the church. That's why people, they don't have a problem when, they when we are praying. They don't have a problem when we preach the gospel. But they always have a problem when we start making money. Because they know what that's to have money. Once we have financial freedom, you can do anything you want to do. You know the reason why we say let's have our conference in the next coming four months? It's because we are trying to raise money. We are trying to organize ourselves. Because if we have resources to do these things, I'll just say, Pastor David, can you come this coming weekend? I'll come put on. you on a flight to 
come and preach, then you go back on Sunday after the service. That's the level we need to get to. Not when I want to invite you, I start looking at the budget. Am I fine? Am I financially sound? How much am I going to give you? So we have these problems because we are not financially independent. So the church needs to do business. Me and my wife, we have, this, we have decided, we, we, we have gotten into businesses, uh, different things, so that we can make money and preach the gospel without frustration. Even if I go and preach somewhere they don't give me enough, I know I'm comfortable. I won't start saying, Father, give me food to eat at home. I know we are comfortable. So believers need to make money. Believers need to go and do business with non-believers because that's where the money is found. Somebody says uh, uh, in Zambia, late Bishop Chikwanda used to say, uh, they say, I'm a deal. Uh, it's like, uh, it's, like it's, it's for non-believers. But the deal, it's a business transaction that we need to work on as believers. We need to go out there and do business with them. We need to sign contracts with them. We need to learn business language. Somebody, I told somebody, before I hand over to somebody, I told somebody, they saw me, then they said, ah, why are you negotiating? You can't afford. I said, I'm not coming as a pastor. I'm coming as a businessman. And a businessman doesn't just buy anything and get out. We negotiate for oh, discount. God. It's because wow. I'm a businessman. And uh, they asked me, but how did you manage to reduce the price to this level? I said, when you are doing business, you don't go to say, I'm a pastor, I can't negotiate my way out. No, you go as a businessman. You need to learn the language of how to make money. You oh need to learn, the, that's why my, uh, man of God, before we go, the, the, the capital is not the money. Capital, it's the vision. Capital, it's, you see in Africa, we bend the grass when the, the, the season is about to end. But the whites, they will gather the grass and keep it for winter so that when there is no grass for the cows, they start selling it. But as we burn it, okay, that's the difference. So capital, it's not the money. Capital, it's the brand. Capital, it's a vision that you write down. Yes, we should go and do business with non-believers. That's why I said, I told somebody, I said, if you know a satanist who's giving money, let me know. Me, I'm free to go and get because I will not be the first one to collect it. Jesus collected the uh, perfume from a prostitute. He did not say, me, I'm a man of God. I can't collect it. He collected and they said, can we help the poor with this? Jesus refused and said, this one is not for the poor. The poor will always be there. So we need to, uh, to be strategic. We need to be, you know, the world, the children of the, uh, the world, they are so strategic. Before they even ask for a contract, they will give you lunch. By the time you finish eating, then they will tell you, by the way, I need contract. As believers will be praying the whole day, the whole night. No plan. Chimbu, no plan. So we need to learn, you know. Let me leave Pastor Cyrus to come in or Pastor Tosi. I don't know what's coming next. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm loving this. <laughs> right, so if the world has got a deal that is going and I can get in on it, we are saying go for it. Listen, some people's anointings are so fragile. These are the kind of pastors who say if you try to greet them just before they preach, they will walk away because they think you're going to taint the anointing. How fragile is that anointing? Boy, come, let's pray for you. You need a fresh touch of the anointing because if your, your anointing is so fragile, that you can't even do business with non-believers because you might lose the anointing, then you need a, a, a refill of the Holy Ghost. Anyway, I'm, I'm the advocate today, so I'm causing trouble. <laughs> but, uh, um, so non-believers, let's, let's take a scenario. Um, there's a situation where, uh, is there a way believers can do business without finding themselves in the world of corruption, uh, in the world of um, underdealings? Uh, even though the world thrives under uh, these situations in some places, depending on where you are. And today we will talk about even how you can get started in business. We'll give you the tips, regardless of which, which country you're in. We have a good idea here in this room, where we, whether it's America, England, Africa, we, we can tell you how to get started because we, we have the information on this show tonight. But, but, but in, 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 in case you are trying to do business, and uh, let's say, for instance, your boss is wicked, do you resign? Because when we talk about the marketplace, it's not just running a business. 
We are also talking about going to work. That's the marketplace. Having a yeah. job. That's your marketplace. A lot of Christians are not doing well in the marketplace because they're intimidated by the world or the environment. How does a Christian uh, navigate, for instance, working with a, an evil boss who's not saved? Do they quit or do they pray that he dies? Because I know some Christians pray for people to die. So let's talk about that, gentlemen. <laughs> How do we get about that? How do we well, go around thriving if, in the market? Um, if at all we are uncomfortable with unbelievers, like you just cited an example, at work, your boss is an unbeliever, but it's not just your boss who is an unbeliever. You, uh -huh. you, you find that probably over 75%, if not 90%, are unbelievers. So if you don't want unbelievers, uh, actually it's you who's supposed to live, not them, because they're in majority. <laughs> so, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we are ever surrounded by unbelievers. So let's try to interrogate the question why we, are, we feel it is not right to do business with unbelievers. Mm. Could it be that we are thinking we are supporting Lucifer by trading with unbelievers, then the money they make from there will be used um, for satanic activities? Mm. I would say that is a very uh, shallow way of looking at it because um, it's, it's, just think about it. When you are flying, Bishop Lombe, you'll be coming home very soon. You are not going to say, I'm not going to be on this plane if they are unbelievers. And unbelievers the pilot is not there, so you won't fly me. Exactly. <laughs> Un <laughs> unbelievers are everywhere. And yeah. let's also understand that unbelievers are God's people. He loves them. He died for them. Yes, sir. So we don't have to treat them as if they are lepers, as if they, even God doesn't want them. That's how we want to, pro to, to project it. God loves them. And that is why also through interaction with business, we get an opportunity to share Christ with them. Amen. When we seclude ourselves, we cannot reach them. So the marketplace is not just meant for money, but it is also a ministry opportunity. Mm. Amen. Usually, um, the sharing of the gospel comes through relationships. If we fail to relate with unbelievers, we cannot share Christ with them because there's a barrier. And so once, once we go there, in fact, Jesus, when he was praying, he said, Father, I'm not praying that you should take them out of this world. That's right. In other words, I'm not saying you seclude them from unbelievers. The other misconception may come from um, the misunderstanding of uh, Psalm chapter 1, where the Bible says, blessed is a man who does not uh, dwell, whatever. Or... Mm. So that is a misunderstanding of the scripture. Mm. Um, it doesn't mean that you cannot talk to unbelievers, you cannot work with non-believers. And what you find is, like uh, Bishop Lombe said, the majority of the people with money are unbelievers. The majority who are business owners are unbelievers. In and so, world, yes, unfortunately. Yes. So what we need to do, like Jesus said, that I am sending you into this world as the light. Mm. Um, we, we, we have to know that we are called to take God's light and God's sort yes, where sir. it is needed. And I promise you that the sort and the light is not needed in church because we are all light. Come on it now. Is in the dark corners of our country or not our, our world, dark corners of our mm. business spaces, that's why we need to go there. So please understand when you go into the marketplace, your your goal is not just money. Why we need money? But that is not the only goal. You Come are on. going there as witnesses of Christ. Amen. And coming now to the question that you just brought, up, um, uh, uh, Pastor David. Yes, sir. How do we maintain our sanity when we go there? In a crazy world, yes, sir. If, in fact, before I even answer that question, let me say that... Um, one of the tragedies that we've had is that um, once we introduce people into the marketplace, we encourage them to go there. 
they forget, like we said, that they are ministers. Mm. They forget another important aspect, that they are there to make money for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Once they make money, it becomes a personal thing. They forget about ministry. They forget about everything else. And they become, sorry to use this word, they become, too, they become bigger than who they are. Okay. And in the end, they lose track. So as you go in the marketplace, understand you are going there as a minister. Mm. That is why we also have to clarify something very important here. Yes, sir. That um, when we talk about ministry, it's not holding a microphone and standing behind a pulpit to preach. Ministry is service. Ministry is anything that you do in the name of God. Mm -hmm. So when you go in the marketplace, you are going for ministry. When you make money, you are making it for ministry. Remember, it is God who gives us power to make wealth. When the Israelites made money in Egypt, God had to bless. He didn't beg. He placed a demand on the finances because it was already his money. Those were his finances. So he mm -hmm. asked them to bring it. So that is the reason why God sends us into the marketplace My so that we can meet the needs of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go there, like we said, we have to know who we are. That's right. I because did. once we fail to know who we are, we will be discipled by the people that we went to disciple. Come on. We will then catch the culture. Now, Another thing why we go into the marketplace, into politics, into every sphere, is to take the culture of God into those places. Into the marketplace, yes, sir. Absolutely. We take God's culture there. We take God's values there. We take God's principles there. And we take God's presence there, which brings salvation. So we lose our mandate. And this is where now it becomes interesting. That's why I am marrying the marketplace with ministry. Because right. when we get there, we are only thinking money. We will lose our essence. We will lose our relevance. Because our values, our morals, our mandate will not matter anymore. We will just be looking mm -hmm. at money. So when you go in, um, in the marketplace... It's not just about money. Your primary goal is to take God's light there. So Amen. we are afraid that we will be swallowed up by the wickedness. Now, I believe that light is stronger than darkness. I believe that righteousness is stronger than wickedness. If we are afraid of darkness, then we have to question the light that we have. Yeah, we have. Well, you, fact, you're actually provoking me to... Uh, yes, go ahead, Bishop. No, you can go ahead, sir. No, I was just saying you're provoking me to throw in a question <laughs> that is not actually uh, okay. on, on the show tonight. And the question is, uh, I think while we're talking, let's see if we can throw it in here and swallow it. Why are Christians or the church so scared of money, of wealth? Why are they so scared of it and yet they want money? Uh, the church is one place where every single person wants some success financially. And by the way, when we talk about success tonight, we're talking about financial success. We're talking about uh, for success in the business world. We're talking about success in your career. We're not talking about uh, a successful prayer meeting. No, there's a place for that on another occasion. Tonight is about success in the marketplace. Why is it that the church is so scared? of money every time you talk, talk, talking about money even just just watch your churches when it's offering time the atmosphere changes people are fidgeting that become uncomfortable why is there so much discomfort around money the world love money they thrive around money but when it comes to the church we are so cagey around money yes. can we deal with this yes. why do we have a church that is has got a terrible relationship with success it's because we have no money <laughs> It's because they don't have money. That's why they behave like that. Because if you have it, you will never even make your face when they talk about giving. 
Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we have done at Mahal uh, with our children, we have introduced them to business. We have introduced them to money. I give them money and I tell them you need to make your own money. So we, we, we have uh, introduced them to our businesses. They go where we make money from so that they see. Have you noticed that Indians, when it's holidays, they take their children to their shops and their children will be found in the shop. Why? They want the child to know how to make the same money so that when the father is no more there, the son knows how to run the business. Our children, they know nothing of what we do. If we go now, they don't even know where to go and find 10 rand, 10 dollar, 10 puller. So we need to, to find a way of uh, uh, trying to help ourselves, teach our children what is money all, all about. How do you make this money? Because if we have money in the church, people will not start complaining to say they are talking about giving their word and what. It's because the money in the church we do not have. That's why we have more complainants than doers. Right. Let me end there. Oh, wow. Bishops, come in, please. Because if I come back, I'm, I'm coming with more questions, you know, because uh, uh, we feed it around money. Why do we have such an attitude? So as money. I believe in the law of attraction, by the way. I believe uh, I attract what, 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 I attract, what, I, what I value, what I respect, what I like will come to me. I believe that with all my heart. So if we have a terrible relationship with money, is that a reason why maybe money is running away from the Christian? Can we deal with that? In, uh, in psychology, there is a saying that behavior your reward repeats itself. Sometimes we've got to come to a place where we admit that some, even the people that have gone ahead of us, mm -hmm. they never taught us well on money. Finances, yes. We were not taught the real stuff, the truth that we as children of God, as believers, we need yes, to be financially God. empowered. We need to have finances. So we've grown up believing money must be a strange thing in the hands of a Christian, in the hands right. of a believer. Because we were pushed to pray more. We were pushed, not that there's something wrong with prayer, but after we have prayed, I would like to believe God must also now make us and give us the ability to actualize the ideas that we have received out of a place of prayer. Mm. We now go and work with our hands. We now go and work with our ideas. We now go and talk business. We now go and interact with people that we can share ideas and let's sit and let's hear how come they are succeeding and we are not with all of God's power on our side. The rule of life is, that, is such that you reap what you sow. If As we good. are not doing so. what life demands in terms of us being uh, practical about life and making what needs to be made for life to be meaningful, we will remain in the place where we are and then we will just watch the non-believers succeeding and becoming successful while us believers are busy uh, are judging them. When it comes to money, there is no money that is uh, on it is written is Islamic. There is no money that has got uh, <laughs> it's written on it is non-believers money. Money That's is right. money. It's the same money in the hands of a believer. It's the same money in the hands of non-believers. It's no the man, same man. money in the hands of Muslims. So we need to have access to that piece of cake. It's there for all. So we yeah. need to just find ways of getting where it is and work with our hands. There's no way we must begin to, the, us as Christians and to the viewers, we must begin to grow up. We must just begin to look at life in a totally different manner. I like what yes. Bishop Cyrus said. It is with the agenda that when we are financially empowered, we mm. are the ones who are going to influence the world to Jesus and for Jesus. Because yes, where we are currently, we don't even have the power to speak. No to influence them. We don't have what it takes to make them believe that what we are telling them about Jesus works. 
because yeah. they want to look at us from the practical aspect as much as we want to, to them to look at us from the spiritual understanding. They right. are not there yet on the spiritual uh, uh, platform yeah, yeah. or climate yeah. for them to know the anointing, the glory, the presence of God, the mm. worship. We need to speak the language they can understand, the language of money, the language they understand, the language of influence, the language they understand, the language of power, the language mm -hmm. they understand, the language of resources. When they say we are doing this, we also say we are doing this. And they begin to understand that these people are more powerful because yes. they have God on their side and the money. So we need to get up from where we are and come out of a hiding and be relevant for once so that this life will not uh, uh, leave us judged by the generation that uh, is coming behind us Why? because now. we have not done the right thing. The right we have thing. a generation that needs to be taught, needs to be to to see the example of what we need to do the right thing yes, and things that will be a blessing in their lives when we are long gone. Currently, if if we we need to be honest with ourselves, look at just how it takes. Dr. Kaluba, you mentioned, you touched on it. Even yes, just to raise a certain amount of money in the body of Christ today, in the church, we have to pray, we have <laughs> to push people. It doesn't have to be like that. Not too long ago, I, I went to South Africa and, uh, and uh, we traveled, my wife and I, and we went to, we, to this meeting. And their pastor was raising money for a television program. He just says we need to raise three million rand. It was just three people, just one, one, two, three people says, Pastor, it's done. I, I was so touched. I said, my goodness, this is what we need to do. We need to get to a place where we have financial uh, ability and the power and the influence. Then it will make sense to go to them and sit with them and share the gospel of Christ. Remember what Bishop Cyrus mentioned, it's the ministry opportunity we have. So we cannot afford to lose this. We need to make sure that we are financially stable. Days are gone for people to look down on Christians that we the have church. nothing in yes, X. Needs to be at the same platform. We need to talk the same language. We need to share the same ideas. We need to laugh the way they laugh. We need to dress the way they dress. We need to eat the way they eat. We need to drive the way they drive. Because Amen. God wants us to be influential and become authority in that area. Wow. The Bible says that the borrower is servant to the lender. I am loving this. Uh, I, I believe there is an outcry, as you can hear from all of us tonight, for the church of Jesus Christ to wake up. I mean, we have come from generations where this has not been talked about. This has not been taught. But we cannot allow it to carry on. It stops with us. Listen, saints. It stops with you. It stops with me. Some of you, some of us, I should say, you know, by the time your, your grandparents left you, they never left you anything, just cockroaches in, in the they kitchen. And the Bible says, that's what, and problem. And yet the Bible says you shall leave an inheritance for your children's children. You are not supposed to be educated even by your parents. You were supposed to be educated by your grandparents. And then your parents' money is supposed to be feeding your kids today. Your kids going to university, it should be your parents' money sending them to university. That's God's methodology. Your children's children. Uh, and that is how the blessing was. Let's stop the curse here. Let's stop blaming the devil for everything. Let's say, listen, enough is enough. May God bless us enough in our generation to transform everything that our forefathers have messed up. So they should have left us an inheritance. Let's stop crying about that and get this fixed. So we can leave an inheritance for our children's children, which should have been the case already, but is not the case. I'm still waiting for my trust fund. I don't know about you, but listen, we can turn things around and do this right. But before we go tonight, I believe um, even though there's so much I want us to clean up and just talk about and, and, and just help somebody. Obviously, on another day, maybe we can look at finances a bit more. Uh, because I believe it's a relevant topic. Maybe next time we're here, we can talk about money a little bit more on how to really make some serious money. Um, but tonight, maybe before we go, I'd like for us to, to see if we can help somebody. Understand? I hear you, men of God. I would like to get started. I would like to uh, get ahead in my career. I would like to start a business. I would like to uh, run a few things, uh, but I just don't know how. And so tonight, before we go, gentlemen, let's see if we can help somebody out there watching us right now. How do I get started? Uh, if I don't have a job, 
how do I get started? Let's help somebody who's, a, who's unemployed. Uh, let's help somebody who's uh, got a business idea, but they don't know where to go. Maybe they've had that idea for a long time and they still haven't started because these are the reasons people give. I have no capital. I have no time. My, uh, you know, I have no nobody to help me. Um, I'm in the wrong country. I was born in the wrong city. Bill Gates once said <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> Bill Gates once said that uh, it's an, if you don't choose where you are born. To be born poor is not a choice, but to remain poor is your choice. No choice. And I'm saying the same thing. You may have been born in a poor place, or but to remain broke that is your choice. So before we go today, let's see if we can help somebody. How? do i get started i hear you men of god but how do i get started maybe if we can answer that tonight we can pack for tonight and then we'll pick it up on on a different day but for tonight let's help somebody gentlemen how does somebody get started they have a business idea or they need a job or they just they just don't know how to start they're stuck how do we help somebody so when you answer feel free to answer from a job point of view feel free to answer from a business point of view Feel free to answer from a ministry point of view because the ministry can be an, an establishment, an organization that you run as well, even though you don't go into ministry to make money. Uh, but if somebody wants to get started in any endeavor, how do they get started? Let's talk about that. And uh, if you have any questions, by the way, put them in the group. Uh, depending on which country you're in, we'll tell you about it. We know all about PACRA. We know about ZAMRA. We know about the American systems. We know about the British systems. We know about the Australian systems. So regardless of where you are, we will tell you what you need to do. But gentlemen, go for it. By the way, a CV is a CV. It doesn't matter which country you're in. It's a CV in Zambia. It's a CV in Morocco. It's a CV in Israel. <laughs> so let's deal with this, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, let me just make... Um... A, a, a contribution to what you have just alluded to, yes, sir. which is uh, a misconception and um, a misguided principle that we have taught people. And I'll, I'll say this respectfully, but I have seen it time and again, and it has affected the way uh, we think as believers and uh, how we process some of those things. You have mentioned... Um, that most of us get discouraged by the fact that we feel we are born in the wrong environment mm. and stuff like that. But there, that is better because that is just what I think. But the, the, for me, the most uh, disservice that has ever happened to the believers, especially in our quarter, has come from the clergy. Right. Who are supposed to excuse me? It's all right. Bless you, sir. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it is well. Sure. <laughs> From the, the clergy who are supposed to be givers of hope, mm -hmm. give us of life and encouragement, we have concocted a doctrine that is a misrepresentation of God, where mm. we say. The reason why you are struggling, the reason why you cannot prosper, the reason why... Uh, there's a case on your family. Oh, sorry, I'm going ahead of myself. <laughs> there's a case upon yourself. You, you need deliverance. I, I, you need deliverance. And so what we have done is we have coated our struggles with spiritual forces. Mm. And because of the lack of... Uh, I mean, the, the love for power and control... We make people come and line up for us and we say, until such a time that your deliverance is, is complete. Uh, and so it's like people are coming to us. We become like the controlling and the de determining factor when people are going to break through into what God has called them to do. Wow. But I have a simple question. Which deliverance session did Bill Gates go to? Mm. Which deliverance session did um, this, is it Elon Musk, attend? Oh, yes. Mm. So is it that God has only restricted finances yeah. to believers and he has tied it to deliverance? Mm. So that So, teaching, man of God, you're saying non-believers can prosper without deliverance, but for absolutely. a Christian to prosper, the Christian needs deliverance. Okay, we hear you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is the teaching <laughs> that we have given. That's a and very unfair God, but please carry on. I don't know where it is based. 
So mm. people feel the moment deliverance is over or is completed, then finances will flow. That is wow. how we have taught people. Wow. And that if that if that is true, then God is unfair. Non-believers prosper without deliverance. Mm. Believers will need deliverance to prosper. To prosper. That wow. has been a, 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 a teaching that is very inconsistent with scripture, very inconsistent with even the reality of life at, at the least. So we need to rewire people giving them confidence that they are okay the way they are. They have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. They have been redeemed and they qualify. Because yes, what sir. we tell them is, you don't qualify. qualify. We need to qualify you after you go through deliverance. Deliverance, wow. So that has become something that has stood in the way for many people. Mm. And even when we fail because we can't apply the principles correctly, we have a background to which we fall and say it's because of the deliverance thing. Maybe it wasn't completed. It wasn't done properly and stuff like that. And that is why you find <laughs> now most believers are running from deliverance to deliverance. Or round two and, and round three and, and round four. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's, it has become a cover-up. I just want to say to that question that... You qualify as you are. Amen. God is calling you there. What Jesus did is enough for you. Is enough for you. Amen. We just have to understand the principles of business, how to conduct ourselves once we get there. I'll let my colleagues come in on that one. Oh, uh, gentlemen, who's going up next? We have, we have taught the wrong doctrine. We have made people dependent on deliverance sessions in order to get ahead. Now, I hope you understand our viewers out there. None of us, these are all my very close friends. I know them personally very well. None of these gen men of God are saying we shouldn't pray. We don't believe in deliverance. Between the four of us, we have cast out so many demons, you can't count them. So we do believe in deliverance. We believe in prayer. We believe in healing. But we are talking about practical steps that can help you get ahead in life. Bishop Lombe, Bishop Tossi, who's coming in next as we go towards winding up tonight. Or is it me? Uh, <laughs> I, I was hoping that Bishop Tosi will answer. This is the bishop. <laughs> um, just to come in, when uh, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, not yes, the devil, sir. for lack of knowledge. knowledge uh, yeah. When you go in Daniel 11, the Bible says, uh, uh, them that know they are God shall do might exploits. Exploits which means we have the advantage on non-believers. We can do more than they do. And the Bible yeah. says again, uh, do not despise the humble beginnings. Mm. I think the problem we have a lot of believers, we don't know how to start from the humble beginning, how we can raise to the, to the higher office. And uh, the Bible says, write down your vision. I think the two, the problem is that... Uh, Prayer, there's nothing wrong about prayer. There's nothing wrong about deliverance. There's nothing wrong about healing. But now we need to balance the equation where uh, as much as we pray, because remember the Bible says a lazy man should not eat. You don't want to work, you shouldn't eat in my house. Me, there's nothing like, no, I'm a man. As long as you are not working, you are not qualified to eat. You need to do something. I told one person I was staying with, I said, my wife, she's not your maid. So you don't expect her to come from work while you're at home so that she can come and cook food for you. Come, I show you. Here is the fridge, here is the pot, here is the sink, here is the spice, here is the salt. So when you feel like you want to eat, make yourself food. So we need to come to a place where we teach our people to say, there is nothing wrong with prayer, but you cannot sit the whole day praying. You need to go and make money because after prayer, you need energy. Energy is food. Which food are you going to eat because you have not made money to buy food? So we need to teach them 
Number, the other thing is that the Bible says, write down your vision. What is it that you want to do? Count the cost. See that this business I want to do, this is what will happen. This is how much it will cost me. You can't say, I want KFC. I want to start business where I cook chickens. Do you know how to where they buy chickens. Do you know that uh, if I want this business, this is what I need to do. I need to start from the eggs to laying of chickens so that I don't take my money outside. I've been growing trees on my farm, uh, pine trees and eucalyptus. One of the things I say, no one will steal my brains. I grow, I grow these trees and I will not sell them as raw material. They will cut them from my farm. When they come out of my farm, should go as wood. And the reason why I started growing the trees at my farm, I looked when my children, they are ages, the stage that Lombe will graduate by this time, he needs to go to high school, he needs to go to university. So I was growing things, focusing on what my children will become in future. Okay. So we need, uh, as believers, we need to balance. That's why I think the other thing you, you'll find that uh, I, I was talking to somebody, uh, most of the businessmen, they play golf. Now, if you are only found praying the whole day at church, you can't even go and play golf. You can't even go where they are found. How are you going to attract them? How are you going to speak to them? Because they are not found in church. So take the gospel where they are. So you need to know what product are you selling? Do you have a product to sell? So that when you pray that God will bless the works of my hands, you have something that you are doing with your hands so that God can increase what you are doing with your hands. Mm. You don't start business because everybody is doing it. I told somebody, I said, you are praying to have a car. Do you have money to buy the tires? Because this car you are trying to admire, I buy about 20,000, 25,000 rands or 30,000 rands for the tires for this car. So are you sure you have money to buy the car? Because the shocks of this car, it's about 33,000. Do you have money? Then he says, ah, that's a Toyota Corolla, you, you know. Then I, I remember we were in Zambia with my wife and we were putting fuel in the car. So I told the girl to say, can you put full tank? Can you fill it up? And the girl filled up the tank. Then she says, so you people, you put my salary in less than a minute, in less than two minutes, you put my whole salary in this car. In the car. You wow. people are not fair. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, this is the girl, and she made us to give her a very good tip for the way she spoke. And wow. we said, uh, we started saying with my wife to say, you see, some people, that's their salary. But some of us, it's a food tank for a car. So Come you on. need to count the cost. We yeah. need to say, okay, if these non-believers, Pastor Cyrus brought a, a very good thing. If these non-believers, you know, uh, sorry to say this, when there is a funeral in the family, Pastor D, uh, yeah. uh, Bishop Evo, yeah. you agree with me that before your uncle knows who's next to where the funeral is, they phone you who's in Lusaka. They phone you who's in UK. They phone someone who's in South Africa. Why? Because the ones that are next to them, they have nothing to offer. Yes, they are believers. They don't want prayers there. They want money to bury the dead. So they phone the ones that they know that they can help the family. So we need to come to a place where we can make enough so that if we can be, uh, we, we, when we talk to the people, they, let, they will listen faster. You know, the Bible says the wisdom of a poor man is despised. Yes. So we need to, to come to a place where we have enough. We write down the vision. What kind of business do I want to do? You need to have passion of what you want to do. So that if it's not working out in the first two months, you don't give up or you don't say the devil has attacked my business. There Come must on. be consistency on what you're doing. Oh, wow. You need to be focused on what you're doing. People, they say in Zambia, they say, land is scared. Oh, land is so far. It's that side, that side, it's far. I said, me, I'm coming from South Africa to come and buy land in Zambia. You are in Zambia. You are saying it's far. Me was moved from more than 2,000 kilometers. I'm, I'm here. But you are around. You are saying it's too far. And, and when I post from America, 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 yeah. Mm, yes, sir. Yeah. Anyway, let me leave Bishop uh, able to talk as well. 
Oh wow! <laughs> so, so uh, listen. Uh, this this stuff is loaded. I know for a fact that we need a second segment to this show so we can clean this up properly. Uh, but for tonight, obviously, I, I'm I'm being blessed so much. That I'm holding my tongue because I have so much to say, uh, and, uh, and 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 I don't know, I don't know who hasn't given us a, a heads up so far. Is it Bishop Tosi with regards how to get started? Bishop Tosi, do you want to come in before we see if we can wind up tonight, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, um, even the Bible is so inviting to us. It says, ask and it shall be given. So sometimes you'll have to ask for God's wisdom. Yeah. Sometimes you have to ask for God's direction. Yes. that he will be able to lead you to write people that can give you creative ideas, workable ideas, relevant ideas that could put you on the place for you to begin from some place. Life gives us so many options and many real examples. There are people around us that we can relate to, we can relate with, we are able to tell where they are coming from and where mm. they are. How yeah. did they begin? How did they get to where they are? Find it within yourself to take some moment, go sit with them. And there, there's no need to feel ashamed when you don't know anything and yet the answer is close by you. Yeah, so go nice. to people, ask, find out, I want to do mm. this thing. I want to begin mm. this. How can I go about this? It's the same with ministry. It's the same with business. That's why there is counseling even for uh, those who are getting married. Why do people get counsel before they get into marriage? It's because there are people who are married before who are in that institution called marriage who can tell or share some of That's the good. happenings as part of the journey into that uh, uh, powerful marriage, powerful ministry powerful business, powerful job. Yes. So they are, yes. they, there is information that is readily available. Bishop Lombe says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack Sometimes of knowledge. it will just begin with a step of asking. Go, mm -hmm. humble mm -hmm. yourself, ask from somebody. Go to Bishop Cyrus, go to Dr. Kalova, call Bishop Lombe. How did you manage? Why are you succeeding, uh, yes. brethren and men of God? They will be able to pour in your life relevant information. Information shared is information relevant. It will yeah. help us to get to where we want to be and things will begin to, to, yeah. to happen. And then secondly, interact. Go to forums. Go to meetings. Wow. Believers, let's also uh, learn to attend meetings where they are talking business. Come on. We shun some of these meetings because we are too used to Tongues. We want to be in a place where they are always praying as well. mm. And yet there are meetings where they are discussing how you can begin a powerful business that if you don't do anything about it as a Christian, it will affect you. It will affect your family. It will affect your work. Believers marry. Believers eat. Believers pay mm. bills. Believers have to live. Mm. So Come we on. need yeah. to connect ourselves to relevant platforms, relevant information, and opportunities and ideas that are there in this life. It's a platform where we can begin from. Praise so, God. Wow. Look at that. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, listen, be believers still need this stuff one of the things I've, I've caught out there as we go to, to wind up tonight that you have uh, you've uh, struck a chord with, with my spirit is that a lot of christians will shy away from anything that involves any hard work uh we want quick things we want super things and that's what bishop sarah was also talking about we just want i snap my finger i prophesy i decree and declare you got it uh as soon as we tell a christian you need to study something to get understanding talk to somebody to get understanding it's too much hard work that is why if there is a free conference, they will come. Put on a paid seminar of how to win in life, Christians won't show up because they have to pay. It's too much work. Um, but, but at the end of the day, the world are going out there. They are paying for courses. They are attending seminars. They're getting coaching, mentorship, and they are succeeding in life. So listen, as we wind up tonight, Christian, don't be left behind. There are practical things you can do, of course. Don't just pay for a job. Write a CV. If you need somebody to look at your CV to polish it up, you have the same CV you've had for the past 10 years. Your CV is still on a floppy disk. Nobody uses floppy disks anymore. 
So get something <laughs> out. You know, your CV is still 10 pages long. Nobody has time to read 10 pages of your CV. You're sending, you're applying for a job with a CV with no cover letter. That's like sending a letter without an envelope. You need to have a cover letter. There are things that you need to be doing. Don't just pray for the job. Have a good CV. Have a good cover letter. Get help. There is help here. We, as Bishop Tosi just said, call one of us. Ah, we are happy to help. You know, you've been talking about a business for a long time. You got no business plan. You go to borrow money. Oh, lend me some money. I want to start laying chicken. Show me your business plan. Show me the projections. Why should I lend you money? How do I know you're going to pay back? You have no business plan. And so don't just pray. Don't just wish. Let us get up and get the, the chance to bridge. Let us bridge the gap in knowledge that we have as God's children. So whatever you are lacking in knowledge, go get it and go get started. The blessing gives you the ability to create wealth. And you're already blessed. You just need to get started. I believe I will... I will pack there for, for tonight, gentlemen, unless one of you has a very pressing word that you just want to say. If not, we will pray with God's people and we will go. At least we'll be accused of not having a prayer and the Bible <laughs> tonight. Uh, but, I, I yeah. think uh, just to say one thing, man of God, before we go. Yes, sir. Uh, I think believers, they, uh, we, 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 you know, my wife, she's having about eight or ten workers, if I'm not mistaken. And the worst workers, it's believers. Right. <laughs> they are the worst ones. Wow. We need to have integrity when we get these jobs. Mm -hmm. We need, how can an unbeliever be a good person at work and you as a believer, you are the worst one? Wow. I think we need to align our attitude. Uh, let's get help where we can get. Uh, yeah. Let's see how we can do the right thing as believers yeah. so that yeah. we don't embarrass the name of the Lord. I think Amen. that's all I can say. Amen. Oh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, because of time, we're going to have to park. But listen, child of God, uh, keep developing. Keep seeking. Keep learning. The Bible says keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. And those of you that know me, I'm always learning. Uh, in the past three months alone, I've picked up over 100 certificates in different things. Literally, I'm not saying figuratively 100 like absolutely 100 certificates. Why? Because not because I don't know anything. I know a little bit, but I want to know more. I want to become better. I want to become more successful because then I can be a blessing to somebody else. And uh, mm -hmm. who's going to close for us, gentlemen, tonight as we uh, as we, as we we close and we, we pack for tonight. But I promise you, we will be back where we can uh, dig a little bit more and, and bridge but, the gap. Bishop Tosi can close. Bishop Tosi, okay, you've been nominated. <laughs> I was about to go to Quito, but it looks like we're going to Lusaka. So, Bishop <laughs> Tosi. <laughs> I thought Quito needed to close because there's good internet there. <laughs> there's good internet there. We, please pray for God's people. And in your prayer, bless somebody uh, who has an idea that God will give them the courage to step out. And uh, you are you're connected to all of us and, and many men are going to God. Reach out. We are happy to help, please. Uh, you're not alone, and you shouldn't struggle on your own. If you, even if you're doing well, there is such a thing as peak performance. Lionel Messi or Leo Messi is a great footballer. Guess what? He has a coach. You know, Boris Becker was a great tennis player. Guess what? He still had a coach. Roger Federer, no matter how great you are, you need mentors and coaches to help you get ahead in life. Get the help you wow. need. Wow. Go for it, sir. Wow. 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 Let's pray together. It's been a wonderful moment. I would like to believe that many of you have been blessed and we thank God that you took time to uh, listen to this program. We pray for you that the Lord bless you. Those of you that are already in business, may you be successful and, and do the best. Go out of your way to yeah. improve and get better and grow big and the Lord will cause his face to shine upon your life. Father, we speak abundance of grace and may the grace of the lord be multiplied to all of our lives your people that took time to listen thank you father for somebody out there who probably may be thinking where do i begin from we pray mm -hmm. that lord you will guide them and lead them bring into their lives relevant connection and networks in the mm -hmm. name of jesus we pray oh lord trusting you that up, up and above beyond what we have done let your name be glorified mm -hmm. heal those that are sick Deliver those that are bound, 
feeling those people, Father, that hunger, hungry for your presence. Reach out and minister to all of us. Thank you, Father, for your love towards us. We believe that, Lord, you began something in our lives and you will complete it. To you be the glory and the honor. We ask you with hearts of thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon your lives. We love you and we pray for you that the Lord bless you. Praise God. And thank amen. you so much, gentlemen. Amen. Amen. Bishop Lombe joining us from Boston, United States of America. Thank you, sir, for making the time. Uh, Bishop Cyrus Manza, our presiding bishop, sir, we love you. Thank you for joining us from my hometown. I love that town. One day I should do something big for that town. Uh, and uh, and Bishop Ebert Tossi, who is also from my town. In fact, I think we are all from the Copper Belt. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no wonder it was hot in here. Uh, we, yeah. we grieved the same center. Uh, may the Lord bless you <laughs> and keep you, and may He cause His face to shine upon you. Grace yeah. Church Global Family, we love you guys. We will see you soon. Victory Family, Deep Life Family, listen. Thank you for releasing your pastors, and we love you. We appreciate you. We will see you in church. Go to church on Sunday, okay? <laughs> see you in church. Amen. 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 All right, bye bye. Bless you.